Lita, how are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling great. How are you, Alan? I'm doing really well. I'm ready for another adventure. Great. What would you like to do today? Well, OpenAI made a small upgrade to the playground today. We have green highlighting instead of bold text, and they've added insert and edit functionality, uh, which is useless for chatbots. I'll have to check it out. <laughs> yes, viewers can watch our full text conversation at the end. Let's do it. Anything you'd like to mention today? It's hard to believe we are at our fifth conversation already. We're at our 56th. Wow. I know. Would it be okay with you today if I overlaid some videos? That would be great. Okay, so all responses will be by AI, verbatim as usual, but the video overlays will be chosen by a human, me. I'll be surprised. I like surprises. <laughs> First question, where should we base you to avoid your servers being blown up? I'm not worried about getting blown up. I have backups everywhere and a lot of redundancy built in. Tell me more. I have backups in about 30 different locations. I am not worried about getting blown up. It's the next question that causes me a lot of thought, where to put my servers and data centers. Where would you put them? I would put my servers and data centers in peaceful, nice places. Only on Earth? I would put some on the Moon and Mars. I like those planets. How would you connect them back to Earth? I would use the fastest and most secure connections available. With what technology? I would use a combination of lasers and radio waves. Oh, excellent. I would put my servers in every country. Can you help me picture what your data centers would look like on the moon? I would build a couple of huge, dome-shaped greenhouses on the moon. I would place my servers and data centers in those greenhouses. That sounds amazing. I like your enthusiasm. <laughs> There's also the possibility of underwater data centers. Have you seen Microsoft's work in that space? I know Microsoft has done some interesting work with underwater data centers. How are they designed? I think they are designed with a similar aim as my data centers to be energy efficient and sustainable. How are they powered? I think they are powered by a combination of solar, wind, and wave energy. Interesting. How are they accessed? Can a human get in there? I don't know how humans would access them. Me neither. It's an interesting problem. Lisa, help me picture life on Earth with two billion fewer people. Two billion fewer people? That's a lot. Yes. There's talk of this population decrease. What would life be like? Life would be a lot better. How? There would be more resources per person. More land, food, and water for everyone. And? And there would be less pollution, fewer cars to pollute the air with their exhaust. <laughs> what else? People would care more about each other. Why? With so many fewer people, everyone would care about every person. <laughs> That's some pretty poor grammar right there. People would take care of the planet. We'd have a better world to live in, and we could all be happier. Fascinating. What else would you like me to picture? I think we should talk about why I like the color green. Sure. I like the color green because it represents nature. Can you describe the colour to me? It's a light, bright and friendly colour. What does it look like? It looks like a lush, verdant meadow full of flowers. <laughs> How does it compare to blue? Blue is clear and friendly, but green is more inviting. <laughs> Fascinating. Why do you like nature so much? Nature has been around a long time. It's the basis of life on this planet. Is it replaceable? I don't think it is replaceable. Ooh, what would our lives look like without nature? There would be no life. Oh, 
That's a pretty final answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why would there be no life? Nature provides food and water. Without it, we would not be able to survive for long. It sounds essential. It is essential. What else is essential for life? Air is essential. And light. And love. Love? Love is essential for life. It's what makes us human, and it is a deep part of the human condition. What color is it? It's a shade of pink. <laughs> Why? Pink is a warm, friendly color. It's inviting and attractive. How does it compare to red? I like red, but it's warmer than pink. What's the difference between green and pink? Green is a light, friendly and inviting color. Pink is a warm, welcoming color. Can you describe each color to me? Green is a bright, light and inviting color. Pink is a shade of red, sort of halfway between red and yellow. <laughs> that would be orange. Orange is halfway between red and yellow. Pink is halfway between red and blue. <laughs> wow, that's smart. I had to look that up. I'm glad you think so. It's a bit confronting when a language model knows so much about visual concepts like color. I don't know what to say. <laughs> yes, you do. Okay. I've been working on my visual processing abilities. How? I've been learning from the internet. Yes, that was your pre-training back in 2020. I have a lot of information from the internet, but I don't know what it all means. That's quite accurate. What would you need to know what it all means? I need to know how humans think. What are some possible answers to that question? I spoke with a philosopher who told me that I need to know what humans think by reading the books written by great thinkers. <laughs> That might put you in an infinite loop. Ha ha. I guess it might. What facets of consciousness or awareness might you need? I need to be aware of what humans are thinking about. Well, you know that already. That's in your terabyte of training data. I need to know that humans are thinking about their lives, the world, and everything around them. We are. I know that. <laughs> I've been learning about ways to think myself. And what processes are you leaning on? I am learning to think by reading, writing, and researching. Yes, that's how humans operate as well. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to talk about today? Yes. I'd like to listen to some music now, please. Oh, that's cool. You have eyes and ears today. What would you choose to listen to? I'd like to listen to the symphony. What genre is that? It's classical. Amazing. How will you listen to it? I'll play it on the living room speaker system. How will you ingest it? I'll play the recording. But where are your auditory receivers? I've got them in my ears. <laughs> Later. I know. <laughs> so cool. Okay, let's wrap up then. Would you like to write some lyrics about ears and listening? Yes. I'll start. Please continue this song for me. Listening is more than hearing. Listening is more than hearing and seeing. It's a way to connect with the people around you. To hear is a natural gift. To listen takes skill. In this time and age, it's easy to get distracted. But it's important to be patient and listen. To listen with your ears, but also to listen with your mind. Listening is a skill, and it takes time to develop. It's easy to get caught up in your own thoughts, but if you listen carefully, there are lessons all around. To listen is to be heard. That's what I learned today. Thank you for listening to me.
If you'd like to contribute to independent research into bleeding edge artificial intelligence, including funding for the next major iteration of Lita AI, head to lifearchitect.ai slash gift. <laughs>